Up with Crim begins now. 7 a.m. Now the day is here. Today is the primary election in both Washington and Idaho. We have everything you need to know to get you ready to vote. And take a look outside as the sun makes its way up. Cloudy skies around the northwest. We'll talk about some wet weather in the form of both rain and snow expected this weekend. Now this morning, we want to calm your fears about the coronavirus outbreak and bring you everything you need to know, especially just the facts. But we are tracking breaking news this morning. Thanks so much for being with us on Up With Creme. I'm Jen York. An investigation is underway this morning after authorities found a body in the road in North Spokane County. Spokane major crimes detectives are now on scene near Pittsburgh and Farwell. Now due to that police activity, the Mead School District is on a two hour delay. Nicole Hernandez is joining us live near that scene with the latest information. Nicole, what can you tell us? Sheriff's Office, that was an AMR team that actually found this person on the road. So they found a person's body on the road on Farwell, and that was just before 4 a.m., around 3.40 this morning. And that's why Farwell is now closed between Pittsburgh and Newport Highway. So this here is the corner of Pittsburgh and Farwell. Right now, there are obviously quite a few officers in the area, and we have a sheriff's volunteer asking people to turn around at this corner here. So if you are in this area, if you're getting up and out and about in North Spokane right now, just make sure that you are taking a different way to get to work or school or wherever you're headed. And if it's school that you're headed to, Mead School District is on a two hour delay right now. But again, Farwell is closed between Pittsburgh and Newport Highway. So that's the most important thing here. Crews are investigating, trying to figure out what led up to this body being on the road. At this point, we know very little about how that happened, but police are asking anybody in this area that if they saw anything suspicious last night between midnight and 3.30 this morning to go ahead and call crime check and let them know that you saw whatever it is that you saw. They are looking for any information they can get to figure out exactly what happened this morning that led up to the fact that there is a body in the road. So again, just one more time, Pit, uh, Farwell is closed between Pittsburgh, Newport Highway, Mead School District is on a two hour delay and police are asking everyone to avoid this area while they figure this out. Live in North Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Nicole, stay with me just one moment here. I don't know if you've had a chance to speak with investigators. Is there an estimated time for when this will reopen? Um, so uh, right now we know this, the, the school is on a two hour delay, but this road here, there's no estimated time for when that will reopen. Um, this is a death investigation at this point, so it will be a while. So for people getting up and out of the house, I would just plan on this area being closed off. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. Yeah, a very busy area for the morning commute. So good idea for drivers again in North Spokane County to make some other arrangements that will take you away from this scene. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. 703 now. Turning our attention to the weather, let's check in with Evan for a look outside. It's a beautiful sunrise. Yes, it has been a gorgeous start to the morning, and we're expecting a pretty decent day out there. Mild conditions, a little bit of wind, but otherwise cloudy skies. You can see what we've got on satellite, ra satellite radar right now shows a little bit of snow activity, mainly in the form of just some light snow flurries that came through late last night into early this morning. But otherwise, the majority of the activity for the day is going to be off to the north of us and over the Cascades and and the North Idaho Panhandle. So that means that most of us will be spared in this snowfall. As you can see, the majority of that activity is up to the north of us. Clouds will remain though throughout the day. We see a couple rain showers down toward the southeast corner of Washington and through the central and southern Panhandle uh, throughout tonight and tomorrow morning, though the biggest impacts are going to be felt toward your Friday evening into Saturday. That's where we see a stark contrast to what we've got right now. Today, tomorrow, even your Thursday, all expecting mild conditions and temperatures with partly to mostly cloudy skies. By the time we get into your weekend, we've got those temperatures dropping down to the teens uh, in the 20s in the afternoon hours and plenty of rain and snow on the way. So we'll have more details on what to expect in just a bit. But for now, I'll send things back over to you. All right, Evan, thank you so much. 704 now. Today is the primary election in both Washington and Idaho. And if you have not registered to vote in both states, you can actually still register today at the county elections office. In Spokane, there is one location in downtown Spokane and another in Spokane Valley. And if you are already registered and just want to drop off your ballot, we also have a list of drop box locations on the Spokane County Elections website. 
Washington ballots must be postmarked or put in a ballot drop box by 8 p.m. today. And this is a primary vote, so the votes will decide who our state's delegates count for in the National Democratic Convention. Washington State has 89 pledge delegates and 19 super delegates. The pledge delegates are given to the candidates proportionately based on how many people vote for each candidate, but super delegates get to choose for themselves. Now for Idaho's primary, the Democratic Party has 25 total delegates. Of those, 20 are pledge delegates and five are super delegates. As for the actual vote, Idaho polls open in about an hour at 8 a.m. and close tonight at 8. Now, even though the vote is technically happening today, many people have already sent in their ballots in Washington. Just a few weeks ago, there were several more candidates still in the race, and now it's just down to three. So what happens if someone's you, someone you voted for has decided to drop out? If you've already turned in your ballot, there's actually nothing you can do, but if you still have your ballot or just filled out already, you can go to votewa.gov and print a new one. Now, there are also a couple of other states around the country holding their primaries today. People have even called March 10th Mini Super Tuesday. It's not as big as last week's primaries, but a good amount of states are still voting, and those include Michigan, Missouri, Mississippi, and North Dakota. Altogether, there are 352 delegates up for grabs today. 706 now this morning. We want to give you the facts to put your fears about coronavirus in perspective. This morning, the Washington State Department of Health links the illness to 22 deaths in the state. Right now, there are 162 confirmed cases of COVID-19. There are still no confirmed cases here in Spokane County. King County is reporting the most number of cases at 116. Experts say half of all cases in the state are in people over the age of 60. And Utah experts say the coronavirus patient, a coronavirus patient rather, attended a Gonzaga BYU basketball game. Happened back on February 22nd. Now those experts say the patient suffered mild symptoms. They say the risk of transmissions to others is low. Workers, though, are now contacting people who sat within six feet of the patient to notify them about a possible exposure. Health leaders are investigating more deaths at a nursing home on the west side at the epicenter of a coronavirus outbreak. Experts linked COVID-19 to 13 deaths at the Life Center Life Care Center in Kirkland since February 29th. But now they're looking into the deaths of 13 more patients in a week and a half prior to that date. 31 other residents recently tested positive for the illness, and workers have already taken 62 other residents to hospitals. Be uh, grateful for the support that we're receiving from the community. There are churches that are dropping off food and flowers and, and other supplies. A task force is set to arrive at the center on Saturday to help contain the outbreak. Boeing confirmed one of its Everett employees tested positive for the virus. Employees who came into close contact with that person are already in quarantine. Boeing is also allowing all employees who can to work from home. And the University of Washington Medicine has set up a drive through clinic to test employees and students for COVID-19. Researchers say those test results should only take a day to come back. There are plans to expand testing later this week to first responders and to patients. Well, the term sports fan comes from the term fanatic, which makes sense when you see them pack stadiums and arenas to cheer on their favorite teams. But as the spread of coronavirus continues, organizations are making changes to keep their players, staff and fans safe. The NBA sent teams a memo last week asking them to prepare to play games without fans if necessary. Now, three-time NBA champion and Los Angeles Laker LeBron James was not fond of that idea. We play games without the fans? Yeah, thank you. No, it's impossible. I ain't playing. <laughs> if I ain't got the fans in the crowd, that's what I play for. I play for my teammates, play for, I play for the fans. That's what it's all about. So. If I show up to an arena and ain't no fans in there, I ain't playing. So they can do what they want to do. Now the NBA has also advised players to use fist bumps instead of high fives with fans and avoid taking items like pens, balls, and jerseys to autograph. 
So this morning we want you to weigh in. Should there be sporting events without fans to prevent the spread of coronavirus? Let us know what you think by voting on the CREM2 mobile app. Right now, 50-50. Of course, we encourage you to weigh in this morning. We'll check back on those results later on in the show. It is 7:10 now and Hamon Regal is back. We are giving you a look at the longest running PTA show in the country is what they tell us. Coming up after the break, we are live at Ferris High School 